I bet the video held your breath. It's a car crash test at a speed of 120 kilometers per hour. No fire, no explosion for the crashed EV. The whole industry used to be chasing after wholly only the energy density. And a lot of events happening in the last two years, three years in Europe, North America, uh, gave us a little bit shock. A chassis and the driver's seat, that's all what I've got. But I'm ready to go. It's the lower body of an EV, the most critical part. From the mechanical perspective, and from energy management, from motion management perspective, that's correct. It's redefining the world's EV battery industry. This is going to be a next step of the whole automotive industry, but also going to change the way of the design philosophy and manufacturing concept. To some extent, it could change the entire EV industry. Much of that evolution happened here in Shanghai. <laughs> CATL has to be in this field. Only competing in price is not the right way. As the world's top battery maker, CATL alone accounts for around 37% of the world's electric vehicle battery market. But now, the company is not satisfied with just offering the lithium packs anymore. The battery itself is the chassis itself. Structural perspective is two in one. Battery already takes up a large part of the costs for an EV. What about the chassis? Battery plus chassis is possibly around half of the cost from bomb perspective. The battery cells are directly integrated with the chassis. It's a skateboard chassis with the main part of the board flat as a skateboard. And that chassis is where CATL now lays a big focus on. We don't see this as only a China game. We see this as an international trend. I went to CATL's test facility in Shanghai to get a ride on the newly launched chassis. It felt just like any other car, but there are some secrets in the chassis. It can even run on its own, without a driver. The batteries and electronic systems are all contained in a chassis. No wonder visitors to China's auto shows are often seen trying to get a view underneath. Here you see this battery cell that we use is a, a prismatic cell. And the way how we handle the cell is we put it actually 180 degree reversed. And we reuse the floor on the top as a top cover of the battery. And we eliminated the original uh, battery frame. So below the panel? The top is the floor. Okay. So the venting is actually on the, on the bottom. This is making it safer we are able to increase the height of the battery cell like around 20 mm. You could get more energy put into the same battery pack. So for all the other chassis currently in the market, the whole structure is different. For all the rest, they have a battery pack inside and the, the, the rocker is actually outside. So that's two separate physical parts. Like traditional OEM, they have an architecture, cut a hole, and ask CATL to put as much as battery possible into this black hole. So this is all in one. And this is all in one. The structure is designed here in Shanghai. Yes. It's a major breakthrough from the current generation of EV battery called cell to pack. In the past, when you integrate the cell into the battery pack, battery pack is a physical component. Now, when we directly integrate the cell into the chassis, there's no longer the middle stage. There's no longer the box. So we put the cell directly into the chassis. The chassis is also functioning as a battery pack. Now it's kind of merged into one unit. Just simply by eliminating the battery pack, there's mechanical parts, quite some subsystem components that you can eliminate. So by nature, this will help saving cost a few hundred dollars. Do you have to sacrifice your energy density? Mm, not, not sacrifice, we have around 13% 
uh, volumetric efficiency improve comparing with the C2P technology. And also we combine that with a, with a switch from 400 volt to 800 volt highly efficient e-powertrain development. The new technology development was planned in the company's battery roadmap in as early as 2018. And a year later, the company formed a team to work on it. Half of the R&D work was done in Shanghai. You see this uh, facility that we invested here in Lingang, and the team of around 600 people are residing in Di Hu area. We started with hiring kind of the best talents from the Shanghai region and with huge experience from the automotive industry. Chinese EV maker Avatar is one of the first to have ordered a skateboard chassis. Huan 真正的小批量定制化的商品实现。CATL is targeting smaller EV startups. Those ones who were comparatively, comparatively smaller, those ones who came with the internet uh, background or with the, the uh, special scenario or business model background, they like this very much. Uh, a lot of them have good idea of the, the, their business model design, but they don't have capability to build a car by themselves. And when they go to these big XYZs, they normally get the answer, sorry, your volume is too small, we cannot support development of a, a, a chassis just for you. The cost will be like an unimaginable number. But for us, we have this very flexible concept. It's completely decoupled from the top hat, and a lot of time it's already pre-integrated, it's pre-validated, it's pre-developed. So that makes it possible for any newcomer to implement their idea, to realize their business model in like one and a half years. In 2024, China became the first country to have produced more than 10 million new energy vehicles in a year. And one in every two cars sold was an NEV. With the emergence of the market, technologies are also evolving at a rapid speed. Normally, in development process of the traditional automotive, uh, Four years around is the, the total cycle that they need to develop a, a vehicle. And today in China, we see the development lead time is normally two years. And we are still trying hard to push with our product and platform. We hope we can push this and shrink the, the, the time to market to 12 to 18 months, depends on the uh, application target. Who expects that it will take another three to five years for the market to adopt a new technology more broadly? With the example of our previous generation, we launched the C2P product in 2019. It was really challenged by the market. Everybody is saying the C2P concept may have this and that kind of challenge. But after three, four years, it's becoming the, the market dominant. So everybody is talking about this kind of technology as mainstream. I believe this will be possibly the same for our next generation product. A lot has changed in the last five years. The year 2024 has not been an easy one for automakers and even all auto suppliers involved. Have you felt that pressure? Sure. Actually, our first customer is not Avatar. Our skateboard, the first version was, uh, was in SOP October this year. Official selling date is November. And unfortunately, you see this violent competition in China and it didn't really proceed that well from the OEM perspective. Looking ahead to 2025, we see tariff threats from the Western world and geopolitical tension still there. How are you going to address all those challenges? We try to work together with our customer a collaborative strategy, which means we don't necessarily need to always be selling the whole product. We should be competing in value creation. We should, compete, we should be competing in the specialty that you can bring, the special things that you can do together with our OEM to the final customer. So there must be some unique selling points. There must be some unique value 